Hey everybody, I'm here today to tell you how to tell when you need a new clutch. If you have a manual car and you have a clutch in that manual car, obviously, these are some signs and symptoms to look for that will allow you to know when you need a new clutch. Now you should be looking for a few of these signs and symptoms together, but there's one big one that is usually the first thing that you notice that will really allow you to tell whether or not you need a new clutch because the other the other three that I'll be outlining are, are somewhat subtle, but this one is a major one that like really allows you to know. And I'll go over it first, okay? So the first one, which is the major one, is that your clutch is slipping, okay? Now I have personally experienced this with my old Honda Civic when and I had to replace the clutch. This was the final thing that allowed me to know, okay, I need a new clutch, or I should at least get it looked into ASAP. Now, this is how it feels when the clutch slips, okay? Obviously, you have your tachometer, which is your RPM gauge, and then you have your speedometer, which tells you, you know, how fast your car is traveling. Now, if you're in gear, and you press, press the gas pedal, and your RPM goes higher, so your R, your, your tachometer climbs, you, you gain engine speed, your RPMs climb, but your speedometer doesn't climb nearly as fast as it should, or it might even just stay at the same speed, that's a good sign. Now, here's an easy way to test it, okay? This is the method that I use. What you want to do is you want to go onto a road that is low traffic, so you can sort of pay attention to your car, okay? You can focus, you obviously still focus on the road, the majority of your focus should be on the road, but you can pay attention to the sounds of your car and to your RPMs and so forth. You want to go onto a road and you want to upshift to a gear that's sort of higher than usual. So if you should if you're driving in third and you know you should still stay in third, you want to shift to fourth gear, okay? So upshift to a gear where that's higher than usual where you're kind of revving just a little bit lower than you would regularly rev. Then you want to floor the gas pedal. Now because you're in a higher gear, you're not really going to get that much acceleration to begin with, but this is what you're looking for. Your RPMs should shoot up should literally just, should, your RPM should just climb up really high. Your, your, your engine speed, you'll hear your car rev, but your, your, your actual speedometer is not going to climb. So you want to upshift to a gear to higher gear than usual. Okay. You want to floor the gas pedal. Your RPMs will just climb up and your speedometer is not going to really move quickly or even at all. You might just maintain the same speed. That is a good sign that your clutch is slipping. That is a telltale sign that your clutch is slipping. And if you have a slipping clutch, then that's a good time for you to get it looked at because that's a huge sign and symptom that you need a new clutch. Okay. The second thing, and the, these other ones are ones that are more subtle, but you should still keep an eye out for them because there's like, they're like early indicators, okay? So the second thing is sort of a spongy feeling. <clears throat> now you'll know when you get a new manual car or a manual car with a new clutch, that clutch feels so solid. It just feels perfect. But eventually as the wear and tear on the clutch happens, the clutch feels very spongy and soft. So when your clutch starts to feel more spongy than usual, that's a sign that it's, uh, that it's getting wear and tear and that it's on its way out. Okay. The third symptom that I want to talk about is a higher biting point. Now, you know, when you drive a manual car, that the biting point is when the clutch allows the sort of the engine to start connecting to the wheels. When you feel that sort of resistance, and the car starts to move, okay, when the car is in gear. That's the biting point. Now, when you have a clutch that's brand new, it's going to have a very low biting point. So when you're driving a brand new car or a car that at least has a brand new clutch, it's going to have a very low biting point. You know, the car, the, the, the wheels are going to start turning as soon as you re start releasing that clutch pedal. But as the clutch gets wear and tear, the biting point gets higher and higher. <clears throat> and that's because the clutch discs don't have a, a lot of friction left. So you need to release the clutch more to get enough friction to sort of get the wheel spinning. So as your biting point of your clutch gets higher and higher, that's an indication that soon enough you're going to need um you're going to need a new clutch. Now, a higher biting point doesn't really make it much harder to drive a manual car from my experience. I've driven cars with clutches that the biting point is super high and it's not really more difficult to drive than usual, but it is an indication that the wear and tear is happening. The higher that your biting point gets, the, the more of an idea that you have that you'll need a new clutch at least in the near future. And last but not least, the fourth sign and symptom that you need a new clutch is when the gear changes 
are not as smooth. So usually when you're driving a, a car, a new car, but especially a car with a new clutch, you'll notice that it's smooth to change gears. There's no shaky feeling. There's no rough feeling to it. But as that clutch goes, as that clutch is on its way out towards the end of its life, then what's gonna happen is when you shift gears, you'll notice that it's a little bit shaky and rough. It's not nearly as smooth as it should be. And that's a good sign that your clutch is on the way out. And you'll notice that as your clutch loses life, it's gonna become shakier and more rough. So with that being said, that's another good sign and symptom. Now there are, those are the things that I wanna tell you with regards to how to tell when you need a new clutch in a manual car. But there's a few other little bonus things that I wanna say. The first is that clutch wear and tear is inevitable, okay? Clutches are meant to be used and to be replaced. So clutch wear and tear is inevitable. Now, the amount of kilometers that you'll get for a clutch's life, for the life of a clutch, I should say, is all dependent on your car, your engine, how much how much you drive and how hard you drive, how hard you shift, how the RPMs at which you shift, there are so many factors. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but clutch wear and tear is inevitable, okay? The second thing is that the replacement of a clutch is also somewhat expensive, okay? Now, the, when you have to have a clutch replaced, it can be quite pricey in comparison to other small minor repairs. But the good thing is that yes, it can be quite pricey, but a clutch usually lasts you a long time. And think about how often you use that clutch, okay? Every time that you start or stop or shift gears, you're using the clutch. So when you think about it, when you work out the cost of a new clutch compared to the amount of times that you press that clutch pedal, it's, it's actually a really good deal. And how much your car is dependent on the clutch, you know, it's actually a really good deal. Cause you look at the cost of replacing an engine, a transmission, and a clutch. And all of those things are pretty much crucial for your car, and the clutch is actually the cheapest out of those to replace. So with that being said, that's another thing to keep in mind. That's the second thing. The third thing is that when you're replacing your clutch, you might want to look into other components that are in the transmission or the clutch area that might you know be replaced so when i had my clutch replaced i had my mechanic who was a friend of mine look into the things that he was already removing and tell me what else could be replaced that would be very beneficial for me at that moment so with that being said you know if you're replacing your clutch and you're spending that money a lot of that money is going into the labor of taking apart the various components of the assembly and with that being said you might want to replace other parts because you know it's already a part the assembly that is associated with the clutch is already a part so it's easier to access those things so you're gonna really get a good deal on basically only paying for the part itself and a, a small fraction of the labor cost of replacing those other parts because everything's already opened anyways okay so that's the third thing and the fourth thing is that you might want to consider getting a higher level clutch okay now higher clutch higher level clutches like sporty clutches and so forth um you know they, they they feel better they they work much better and sometimes you can get clutches that last longer so since you're already paying a lot of money for the labor for the replacement of the clutch upgrading your clutch to the next level the actual material the actual car part it will only cost you a small fraction more a fraction of additional money so with that being said you might want to look into it because a lot of the labor is going to be the same cost whether you're getting a higher level clutch or just a regular level clutch you know a standard stock replacement clutch so you might want to look into getting a higher level clutch because it won't cost you that much more in comparison to the overall cost of replacing it okay and that's basically it in this video i just wanted to go over how to tell when you need a new clutch in a manual car and i also wanted to tell you a few tips and ideas for replacing the clutch um, from my experience and with my knowledge if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know what you think down below as a comment what have been your experiences what are, what have your experiences been with regards to replacing a clutch and experiencing a clutch that is on its way out, that has experienced wear and tear, and that you know you need a new one. Tell me your experiences down below as a comment, and of course, be sure to subscribe for more great car and driving videos just like this one. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.